Here we're going to be applying the transgenic concept or genetic engineering to plants. Many of the same ideas and concepts apply to animals as well. Plants tend to be a little bit more simpler in their organization, so it's a little bit easier to understand. See here with uh, corn plants being grown, uh, this corn seed is a transgenic plant, it is a GMO, genetically modified organism. It says on the bag here, herbicide resistance. So that is a gene that's been inserted into this particular corn seed to allow the farmer to apply a particular herbicide and to kill the weeds, but not the host plant here. So it's looking general here. Transgenic plants, genes from one organism being transferred to a plant. Since DNA is nearly universal, this is possible. Because DNA, regardless if it's a human, a jellyfish, a corn plant, a palm tree, all contain the universal code allowing us to transfer um, and change transgenic to move genes from plants to animals or from one plant to another plant. So we come at DNA. Plant cells read the DNA sequence just like it was a normal sequence. So just reading along and A, there's adenine, G, squanine, so on and so forth. It's just reading it right along. So when we recombine in DNA or we insert genes, you can see here our eco R1 site, a restriction enzyme, and we insert a gene of interest, it just goes along and reads that plasmid just as normal. Uh, it doesn't read as anything different or foreign because it's the same universal code regard across all organisms. So how to make a transgenic plant? Kind of the simple and easy steps here. Step one, find a gene of interest in an organism. An example would be an insect resistance bacterium. So here's our enzymes, our BT, Bacillus thuringiensis is a very common one. Uh, it's a gene inserted into corn expression. And here's our promoter region, here's our plasmid. We're putting those foreign genes into the corn cell genome, and we grow GM corn, genetically modified corn. So the key part here is to find a transgenic plant. We want to make it worth our while. We want to find a gene that's of interest from an organism. Now, I don't think you realize um, how difficult this initial step is. Uh, it sounds really easy, but finding that gene of interest is literally like finding a needle in a haystack. Uh, it's hard to identify and isolate the correct gene or the specific gene that you're interested in. Here is a human chromosome. So chromosome 9 contains 136 million base pairs. And that's just one of the chromosome um, chromosomes that we have. So identifying exactly the location and where that gene is and splicing that gene out is a very difficult and time-consuming and kind of expensive process. But it is possible. Uh, again, just because it's possible, I don't think it's really easy to go through and just pull a gene out. Uh, does take quite a bit of research to be able to identify that and where it's located. How to make a transgenic plant? An alternate route to this. Instead of trying to find the gene, often we want that gene to make a protein. So if there's a certain protein product that's the goal, it may be possible to work backwards in the genetic sequence. Begin with the end in mind. So through reverse transcriptase, it's an enzyme that generates DNA from RNA, we can work backwards. So you can see here we have our protein. So taking our protein and working our way backwards, we can generate RNA. And from RNA, we can work backwards and generate DNA. So this can be one way. Because our concern here is the end protein, we don't necessarily care about this exact DNA sequence. We can get a DNA sequence that will match that particular protein. You may remember back from our translation and transcription, there's different DNA sequences, remember our codons for amino acids. So there is a potential for many different DNA sequences to generate the same protein. But there will be very specific um, lengths and needs and organization of those nucleotides to generate that specific protein that we want to produce with our transgenic plant. So complementary uh, DNA formation, which is lowercase c DNA, uh, primary RNA transcript contains exons and introns. The process of mRNA contains only exons. Which hopefully you remember that from our previous lecture. It's used as a template to create a single strand of DNA termed complementary DNA. This cDNA is converted to a double-stranded molecule. We're kind of trying to work our way backwards here from our end protein region. So reverse transcriptase is an enzyme used to generate complementary DNA from an RNA template. Remember, it's kind of going backwards. That's why it's called reverse transcription. It's mainly associated with retroviruses. 
as we um, learned back when we did DNA and RNA and talked a little bit about viruses. Viruses can be um, DNA based or RNA based. If they're RNA based, they want to go back and through reverse transcriptase, and those are called retroviruses, not viruses from the 70s, but viruses that are made or have the main sequence in RNA that need to go through the process of reverse transcription to generate that DNA to redirect the cell that's trying to infect. How to make a transgenic plant? We develop a cloning vector. Plasmids in which small segment of DNA is produced independently from the main chromosome. Little circular plasmids, remember, from our prokaryotes, our bacteria cell. We have that vector that we're looking at having our gene of interest inserted in, and that's what we want to replicate. And they replicate very quickly. As I said, E. coli can mu multiply itself every 20 minutes. These plasmids can replicate very fast. Step three is to cut the main uh, DNA and vector with the same restriction enzyme so the sticky ends can join. Here we have the Hindi 3 gene. We're cutting our main genome as well as our gene of interest so that they can bind together. This will incorporate the vector into the main sequence of DNA. We'll be able to replicate that. Those sticky ends are areas that want to join together, and they're cut with the same restriction enzyme, so it's the same ends. And this, as a result, we can cut this original host plasmid, put our little gene of interest in there, and seal it back up. And the cell's just going to read it as normal. You can see here, original strand, um, strand 1 and strand 2, our circular DNA. Once incorporated, the key now is replication of that sequence. We want those cells to multiply as quickly as possible. We want those plasmids to go through and make two and exponentially multiply from there. That's what's going on here. We see our plasmids and replication is occurring. We could also integrate our plasmid into our host um, DNA sequence and multiply that. Step five here, we're taking our gene of interest and making it into tDNA or transfer DNA. This sequence and inserting into independent plant's chromosomes. This does occur naturally, so I don't want you to think this is a completely foreign process in agrobacterium. They're gram-negative bacterium that use horizontal gene transfer to cause tumors or galls in plants. Typically, if you walk in the woods, you might see a, a tree that looks that has these galls, these weird growths on them. That's because they've been infected with agrobacterium. And this is what it kind of will look like. It can also occur on roots. So it's a type of bacterium called agrobacterium that causes plant diseases such as crown gall, uh, and hairy root that results in plant death and agricultural loss because this kind of mass of cells kind of resembles to you could say to some extent some um, similarities could be drawn to like a cancer. In agrobacterium the ability to infect the plant is uh, contained within a gene in the plasmid that's transferred from one bacteria to another through a process of this conjugation. In this gall that forms it's reducing the surface area to volume ratio in this case, in the roots, not allowing these roots to be as efficiently absorbed nutrients. I'm not going to go through the major details of this, but this does provide some background information. And this is a plant cell, and this is our agrobacterium. And this bacterium, what's very unique about it, it is able to take its genes, or certain genes, from its own plasmid and insert it into a host cell. It has ways of bypassing a lot of the regulatory mechanisms that, in this case, this plant cell has. So it's this transfection by agrobacterium. What we've done through our process of biotechnology is replicating this same basic idea. <clears throat> or in some cases, having the agrobacterium take that gene of interest and have the agrobacterium be the one that inserts it. Here's again a quick gen plant genetic modification summary. It mirrors a lot of the general genetic biotech that we talked about. Taking our plasmid, our foreign DNA, cutting it with our restriction enzymes, with our sticky ends, joining it here, mass multiplying it, in this case taking our original cells, using agrobacterium to insert the gene of interest, having a way to screen, um, select for the cells that have our gene of interest, and then growing a plant from that that will then produce the particular protein that we're interested in.